Welcome to the shop. We are going to demystify DC generators in 10 minutes or less. So strap in, let's see what we got. In front of you are the internal components of a DC generator. We have our armature right here, a couple notable points. We have our different segments, we have our coil windings, and we have our commutator at the end. The other component are our field coils over here. And you actually see we have two sets of field coils. When these are all together, we create four poles. So you can picture we have two sets of north and south poles on either one. Now you'll notice that two of these have a couple carbon brushes that are attached to the end. The reason that this is the case is that we actually pull the current or the voltage to power these field coils from the armature itself. It's referred to as a self-exciting generator. So we don't need an external power source and able to get this generator to be able to produce voltage. The reason that works is because we have all these soft metal components and they act as an electromagnet. So when it's in operation, we have current flowing through, it's going to create a strong magnetic field. That magnetic field, even when everything is shut off, is going to stick around for a little bit. We refer to that as residual magnetism. That residual magnetism is what allows this armature to self-excite. So if this is in the off position, we still have some magnetism left in these field coils. So as we start to rotate this armature, it's going to make and break those connections with the magnetic field. As a result, it's going to produce voltage that exits through the commutator, comes in through this carbon brush, and continues to energize the field coil. Now here's a side thought. What happens if we don't have enough residual magnetism in these field coils to be able to get the armature to excite and re-energize the field coils? We end up having a problem because the generator can't go. How do we fix that? We have a procedure called flashing the field. Basically all that's going to happen is we pass current through these field coils in the same direction as normal flow. It doesn't have to be a lot of current, just a little bit of current. That current flow is going to restore magnetism to these field coils, and then it's ready to self-excite. So what we have is a stacking effect. The more voltage we produce in the armature, the more voltage or current is going to pass through these field coils, which is going to make a stronger magnetic field, which in turn produces more voltage through the armature and is going to create a stronger magnetic field through the coil. And this can go on and on and on and on unless we do something to regulate the amount of current that can pass through this field coil. So obviously we have electrons entering in through this carbon brush. They're going to have to exit out through this field coil. And that's where we can place a voltage regulator, which in its most basic old school fashion is just going to be a variable resistor basically kind of like a rheostat, we can control or restrict the amount of electron flow or current flow through this field coil. On the flip side, it could get as complex as what I'll show you. Well, why not right now? Our little three-piece voltage regulator right here. We have a couple different pieces, but the most basic way that this works is we have three segments. We have a reverse current relay, we have our current limiter, and we have our voltage regulator. Basically, these are all functioning like solenoids. We have this coil right here, which is going to produce an electromagnetic field, and it is going to pull this little tiny contact away in the event that we have too much voltage. So basically, this spring is going to be calibrated for the amount of voltage we want this regulator to operate at. If we go past that amount of voltage, it's going to go pop, pull that away, and we're going to cut off flow from the field coil, which is going to change what we get. As uh, The other side is we have our current limiter, and that current limiter is going to do the same thing. If our current is too high for the output of the generator, it's going to energize this coil enough to pull the contact out of the way, and we break connection until that drops back down to a safe level. On the other side, we have our reverse current relay, and the reverse current relay is unique because with DC generators, if we have current flow the opposite direction, instead of generating, it turns into a motor. We don't want that to happen. So any time that the battery voltage is going to be higher than the generator voltage, then this contact is going to break and we don't have a connection going through. It allows the generator to build up voltage that's higher than our target battery voltage, which allows it to function normally. We end up with a generator instead of a motor. But moving on, let's talk about the generator components itself. So we have our armature right here, and you can see there are a number of wires that are soldered over to 
our commutator connections right here. And this commutator is what rectifies the electron flow. So basically any spinning armature is going to produce AC. That's just what it does. It's our dirty little secret. We have to do something to that current flow to turn it into DC. That's what this commutator does. By having segments that are located opposite each other, as we rotate our armature, we're gonna ensure that current flow can only go one direction through this whole armature. The way that that ends up helping us is with all these different little segments, we can have a number of different loops to pass through. We have, again, three things that will increase the amount of voltage output that we have with any particular generator. We can either increase the magnetic field strength, we can increase the speed that the armature rotates at, or we can increase the number of wires that we're passing through that magnetic field. So in this case, we have examples of all three on this particular generator. Now, one thing that I want to point out that's uh, kind of unique to these generators, especially high output ones, is the more current that's being produced or the more voltage is being produced by this commutator it's going to increase the magnetic field which is what we want that's how we get nice strong output however something weird can happen if we take a look at these poles that we have in our field coil picture that we have our north and our south our north and our south right now as we look at the way that this is set up the point where we're going to produce the least potential difference, so basically when we aren't going to be moving any current through this coil at rest, is going to be this point that's right between the two poles. Dead in the middle is going to be our neutral position, at which point we aren't going to be moving any current in theory when we're in that neutral position. So if our brushes are aligned with that neutral position, when we go from one commutator segment to the next, we should have relatively low current flow, which means we won't have a tendency to arc across these two commutator second segments. You can picture kind of what happens if you take the positive lead on your battery and you disconnect it and then reconnect it. You're going to get a little arc. Over time, that arcing can cause burning and scoring on this commutator, and it can also wear down the carbon brushes very quickly. Now, something interesting happens. The more magnetic field that we produce as this armature rotates, it can actually cause the magnetic field to shift just a little bit. We call that armature reaction. If that tends to shift a little bit and our brushes are lined up in a way where they're now no longer on that neutral plane, then we're gonna have arcing. And there's a couple different ways that we can handle that issue. We can either use inner poles, which are smaller poles that are opposite the pole that it's adjacent to. So basically it will counteract the magnetic field of these field coils. We have another option called compensating windings, which we'll usually put on one side or around the entire field coil, and that's powered off the armature. So the faster the armature turns and the more voltage we produce, it charges up those compensating windings even more and it's gonna counteract the magnetic field for that pole. Thus, instead of having it shift over a little bit, it's gonna come back to a neutral position and we don't have any arcing across the commutator. Now, normally, this is not gonna flap around as you see the carbon brush right here. What we have are a number of spring-loaded holders on the back. So these spring-loaded holders are going to hold the carbon brushes tight up against the commutator. And you see these little springs back there, pretty straightforward. To give you an idea of what it looks like inside those slots, I have a armature with the wiring cut away. And again, we talk about how you can increase the number of wires passing through a magnetic field in order to accomplish our goal, which is to create more voltage. Well, that's exactly what we've done. So we have a number of turns of the same wire. If we have a break in one of these wires, then it's going to short out somewhere, or we just may not have any current that can pass through, so we aren't gonna have the generator operate properly. Similarly with the field coil, these are supposed to be continuous windings on the field coil. So if we have a break on the field coil, we won't be able to pass current through or it will short out. So we'll either end up with no voltage coming out of the generator or we'll wind up with not enough voltage coming out of the generator. Hopefully that makes a little more sense. Hopefully that demystifies some of the pieces inside. And look at that, it was less than 10 minutes.